Hello again, and now it's time for pipe cleaner meiosis. Again, doable in your own home with a couple of pipe cleaners and a piece of paper and a couple of scissors. One scissors, two scissors. I don't know, something like that. Anyway, we'll start out with saying we have two types of chromosomes here. So these are different chromosome types. This is chromosome one and chromosome two. We have a diploid organism, which means for each chromosome, we have two copies. So this is 2n equals 4. And this is just uh, just as you're beginning your um, interface. Now, during interface, there is the synthesis of new DNA, which we will do here by twisting these together. Give them one twist, two twists. And one twist, two twists. One twist, Russian twists. M. Night Shyamalan, because I'm giving this some twists. All right. And now we have is for chromosome one, we have each one of these has been replicated. <clears throat> and each one of these has been replicated. So two chromosomes there. And chromosome two, same deal. Now these would all be in the nucleus, kind of jammed all together when we start prophase one. Now something special is going to happen in prophase one called crossing over. And I'd like to take these two chromosomes here and show you what crossing over would look like. So they're going to put their arms across each other in, a, in what's called a chiasma, and they're going to twist, and uh, what's going to happen is they're each going to cinch off. We're going to do that with taking these scissors and, oops, we don't want to cut too many arms. Just cut them like that. So the chromosomal break occurs, and then they're going to actually switch arms. So I'm going to twist this over here. Twist it on tightly, please. And then I'm going to twist this on over here. Tightly. Make sure it's very tight. You're not going to be taking that off again. What we have here are new chromosomes that have um, part of the homolog on them. So they've exchanged DNA with their homologs. And that's what happens during crossing over. That's going to all happen in that big jumble of a nucleus. So... We are ready to begin prophase, we're in prophase one, and as these homologs condense, as they cross over, the nuclear envelope starts to dissolve. In prometaphase one, they'll get attached to spindle fibers, and they'll start moving apart like this. And in, pro, and in metaphase, they'll line up on the metaphase plate. But you notice something different right away. Instead of lining up in the metaphase plate in a single row, like they did in mitosis, they're lining up with their homologous pair during meiosis. So lining up on this metaphase plate, which way they line up, each one is going to be independent of the other. So if this one lines up with the fathers over here and the mothers over here, this one can line up really either way. And that's the idea of independent assortment. So now during anaphase, instead of separating the sister chromatids, they're going to separate the homologs. And it's going to be pulled apart, and at telophase, they'll be separated into their own oops, temporary nuclei. I say temporary because we're about to begin the second phase of meiosis. There's usually a, cy a cytokinesis between here, so let's uh, rawr, cut this in half. Now, these are two new cells. We're going to take this cell, and we're just going to move it aside here, and we're going to focus on this cell. Now you notice this cell has one copy of chromosome 1 and one copy of chromosome 2. That makes it haploid because it doesn't have two copies of each chromosome type. So this haploid cell now is ready to undergo meiosis part 2. And for that, it's going to line these up in the middle. Uh, sorry, let's start with prophase 1. Uh, prophase 2, you're going to have the, uh, if there's a temporary nucleus, it's going to break down. Prometaphase 2, you're going to break, move them around, start attaching the spindle fibers, and in metaphase 2, line them up on the metaphase plate. This looks kind of like mitosis because it really is. You're lining up things on the metaphase plate. You cannot line them up with their homolog because they do not have their homolog. This is in a separate cell. Now, during anaphase, they're going to break apart, and your sister chromatids are going to head towards opposite ends of the cell. During anaphase here, and then during telophase, they'll get into new nuclei. And cytokinesis, these are all anaphase 2, telophase 2, 
cytokinesis here to break them apart. Two gametes, and I'm going to do the same thing here. So prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two. Telophase 2 and cytokinesis. Wow. This makes four independent, unique gametes. So you see here, they are unique because of that crossing over that we did in the very beginning. So if there was an allele here, say uppercase A, that uppercase A is going to be on this red chromosome. And it'll be also on this replicated part of this red part of this chromosome. So uppercase A and an uppercase A. If there are a lowercase a, uh, a different allele for the same A gene, over here on this blue chromosome, you would also find that lowercase a over here. And if you were to put other alleles on these smaller chromosomes, you will notice there are four different types of chromosomal combinations here. So you have the blue and blue, the blue and red, the red and red, and the blue and red. So four different types of combinations, and that's going to make these each independent gametes. So they are genetically different because meiosis brings the variation through crossing over and through independent assortment. And we're going to add to that a factor of random fertilization. We don't know which of these four gametes is going to be the lucky gamete to fertilize the next generation, thus increasing the variation available for evolution to work on. Seems simple enough. Now you get to do it on your own. You're going to, instead of saying there's a gene here, take a piece of tape and put it here, put the other allele here, and do the same thing with these other two. You get to choose what your allele is, and you get to kind of create your own gametes using that. Have fun!